As you see, I introduced the topic with a cover page containing a, a, probably a familiar analogy to all of us, and that is oh, six men with their hands on an elephant, six blind men with their hands on an elephant. And I use that analogy because this topic of adaptive learning is huge and from my study, no industry representative, no company, no professor truly has a thorough understanding of it, but they all have valid perspectives of adaptive learning. And I'd like to just take a few moments this afternoon of your time to explain some of my perspectives and how I have used adaptive learning to the benefit of my students in the Department of Systems and Computer Science here at Howard University. So let me begin with the reality check. And that begins with an admission and a recognition that all of us are all great teachers. And we choose to teach because we really, really have a passion for what we do and we want our students to achieve. And similarly, we want always to improve and to impact our students better and in different ways. Now our classes, because we've done this for many years, have become engaging and we're creative and we focus on our students' passion. And I, I bring this point up because, as I'm going to speak at some length later, online and adaptive learning systems concern me in regard to their ability to impart passion. And all of you who have taught for some time know that we need to coach and sometimes show students our passion for our subject in order to get them to be motivated to learn. So I'll speak to that in some depth as we go forward. But let's face it, when we put our content online, we can lose some of that passion. So what things are lost when we move our content online, our delivery online? Well, first of all, we can't adapt to our students' needs. And if you have taught for a long time like I have, you know that it's part of understanding students and what they're hearing and understanding in terms of your lectures is to see them, see their body language, and to be able to adapt what we say in a real sense to their needs during a lecture. So with online learning, we cannot judge their engagement. Most systems do not allow us to stop and explain things better. And we can't answer individualized questions, in a sense remediate misunderstandings in real time. You can see where I'm headed with this. So frankly, some of our effectiveness gets lost. So what do our online courses need? And I think we're all aware of the university initiative for increasing our online offerings. So it's important and timely that we address the kinds of things that we're going to need in our online courses. And I'm going to make a pitch for adaptive learning, as you can see. Now, to impart our teaching, we need to, in a sense, take our expertise as teachers and try to put that into our online content. And in our delivery method, try to get our students to understand the material. And I'll, I'll drill down on that meaning of understanding a little bit more later. We need to find ways to adjust our delivery content for individual student needs. Our online learning also needs to find ways to remediate our students. Because we know that all students do not learn at the same pace, do not comprehend things at the same depth, and need remediation as evidenced by some of the assessment results that we get on our exams and exercises. So we need, in general, ways to improve our teaching. And what I'm saying here, in a general sense, is that putting your content online is one thing. But in order to make that online offering effective to our students, we really need to up our game. We really need to put more of our teaching expertise into our delivery of that content. And I am going to present adaptive learning as one of the ways to do that. So in this presentation, I'll describe some of the various viewpoints 
of this new concept called adaptive learning. But again, I'll remind you that this is still, you know, blind men with their hands on an elephant. Everybody's got their own viewpoint and all equally valid. So I'll talk about why do we need it here at Howard. I think I've already set the groundwork for that case. And I'll talk about how does it all work and how can we and our students benefit from adaptive learning. I'll talk about some of the industry uh, offerings. Uh, Dr. Red has already alluded to some of the giants in that industry, McGraw-Hill um, and others. And then I'll talk to you about some of the uh, research results that I found with introducing adaptive learning uh, tools into my courses. And you'll hopefully see where I'm headed with my research in this area. So I scanned the internet and the literature and came up with a number of definitions for adaptive learning. And what I found was that the definitions have some commonality, of course. They all or most speak of a data-driven tool. Those data-driven aspects being usually called um, either analytics or system heuristics. They all have an aspect of personalization with them and they Though we tend not to use this word very often, they all provide some level of remediation. Uh, the word remediation is kind of turning into additional support to try to keep it out of a negative perspective, but we'll use the word remediation for purposes. So what does adaptive learning mean? So I, I pulled together these definitions and put them into this, this very simple Venn diagram. So let me start here with the differentiated learning. So differentiated learning is something that we all do and has been part of our curriculum for some time. We give math placement tests and tests of other types to try to, to differentiate those students who need more help and where they are in their math skills. We have preset categories which we then put students into based upon those placement tests. And we also have courses that are considered remedial courses uh, and honors courses to also differentiate between types of students and learners. This is part of adaptive learning. We also find that the industry began, and some of my early work in adaptive learning, used rule-based um, mechanisms to guide learners in individual ways through content. I'll talk about some of those rules a little later. And these rules, when put together, perform a, produce a decision tree. And that decision tree in this very first set of offerings in adaptive learning tools were used to allow students based upon rules that were based upon input from their performance to be able to look at material at different levels of complexity to get remediation based upon rules. And in a very simple sense, let me just describe one of those rules. If a student gets um, below passing on the midterm, then we take that student and we try to get that student some tutoring and trying to bring that student's level up to um, acceptable levels and for them to be successful in the course. But the third circle in my Venn diagram is the important one, and that is the adaptive circle. Because here, we're talking about capabilities where a system learns about the learner. And I'll also introduce another avenue in this adaptive where the content can adapt and learn also. That's fairly new. But in its learning about the learner, the system improves its delivery and content in order to address what it knows about an individual learner. So I'm hoping you can, you, you can see that these all intersect. And so I'm saying in a sense that right there as these circles intersect is where most of the industry offerings that are being successfully used today are putting their efforts into developing tools that personalize differentiate students, and ultimately adapt to those students' needs. 